Hello guys, hope you all are fine and today we are gonna start a new topic that is pharyngeal pouches, okay? We already finished the pharyngeal arches and today we are gonna start pharyngeal pouches, okay? So what does I mean by pharyngeal pouches, okay? The pharyngeal arches are covered inside by endoderm, so the endodermal depression between two pharyngeal arches are called pharyngeal pouches, okay? For example, if you can see here, this is first pharyngeal arch, this is second pharyngeal arch, this is third pharyngeal arch, this is fourth and this is sixth. Now this is the inside of the pharyngeal arches and this is the outside of the pharyngeal arches. Now the inside, the pharyngeal arches are covered by this line and this is called endoderm, okay? Now you can see here, this is first and second, you can see here is the depression, the endodermal depression. This endodermal depression is called pharyngeal pouches, okay? So, the pharyngeal arches are inside covered by endoderm and the endodermal depression between two pharyngeal arches are called pharyngeal pouches. You can see here, there is endodermal depression, here, here this one is endodermal depression, this one is endodermal depression and this one is endodermal depression. These endodermal depressions are called pharyngeal pouches, okay? It's very simple. Now you can see, now you understand the definition, okay? Now, they are poor in number, there are poor pharyngeal pouches because you can see first pharyngeal arch, second pharyngeal arch, third and fourth and sixth. You can see the depression between the two, one and two, this is first pharyngeal pouch. Between two and three, this is second pharyngeal pouch. Between third pharyngeal arch and fourth pharyngeal arch, this is third pharyngeal pouch, okay? And now between the four and six, this is fourth pharyngeal pouches, okay? It's very easy. So the endodermal depression, which is present between two pharyngeal arches are called pharyngeal pouches, okay? And they are four in number. Now let's talk about that. So, first pharyngeal arch. It's very simple. The endodermal depression between first and second, P means pharyngeal, okay? So pharyngeal arches, the endodermal depression, the endodermal depression between first and second pharyngeal arches are called first pharyngeal pouch. Okay, you can see here in the diagram. This is first pharyngeal arch and this is second pharyngeal arch. And they are lined by endoderm and the, this endodermal depression is present between first pharyngeal arch and second pharyngeal arch. This endodermal depression is now called first pharyngeal pouch. And okay, it's very simple now. The derivatives of first pharyngeal arches are deteriorative. Auditory tube is also called pharyngeotympanic tube, okay, which gonna connect your tympanic cavity of the ear with the pharynx. So that's why it is also called pharyngeotympanic tube, okay, or auditory tube. Auditory tube or pharyngeotympanic tube and another one is middle ear cavity. Okay, cavity of the middle ear is, you can also simply say like that. You can see here, this is the first pharyngeal pouch and it's gonna give you middle ear cavity and it's gonna give you auditory tube or which is also called pharyngeotympanic tube. But mostly we can, most specifically we can say epithelial lining of the middle ear cavity and epithelial lining of the auditory tube. Because endoderm layer of the, uh, endoderm layer of the embryo, it mostly give us epithelium in our body, okay? Most of the epithelium in our body is, we can, we, we, it is derived from uh, endoderm, okay? And now so, now this, this is very very important for MCQs, okay? The derivatives are first pharyngeal pouch. So remember, auditory tube which is also called pharyngeotympanic tube because sometimes they may ask you pharyngeotympanic tube, they may not give you the auditory tube. So you have to remember the middle, the auditory tube can also be called pharyngeotympanic tube and the second one is middle ear cavity. These two are the derivatives of first pharyngeal pouch. Okay, it's very simple. Now second pharyngeal pouch, the endodermal depression between second and third pharyngeal arches are called second pharyngeal pouch okay you can see here in the diagram second pharyngeal arch and this is third pharyngeal arch and now this depression is called second pharyngeal pouch okay now the derivatives of this second pharyngeal pouch is actually palatine tonsil okay palatine tonsils i mean epithelium of the palatine tonsil you can see here are the crypts this is palatine tonsil these are the crypts of the palatine tonsil crypts Crypts, okay, and these crypts or depression is going to be lined by epithelium, okay, and so that epithelium is actually derived from the uh, second pharyngeal pouch. You remember, for the first pharyngeal pouch, the derivatives of auditory tube and middle ear cavity, and for the second pharyngeal pouch, remember the palatine tonsils are more specifically you can say epithelium, the palatine epithelium of the palatine tonsil. Let's continue. Okay. Okay, so now the third pharyngeal pouch, okay. So third pharyngeal pouch, the endodermal depression between the third and fourth pharyngeal arch is called third pharyngeal pouch, okay. 
you can see here this is third pharyngeal arch and this is fourth pharyngeal arch and this depression is actually the pouch and this depression is the third pharyngeal pouch okay third pharyngeal pouch now the derivatives of third pharyngeal pouch are inferior parathyroid gland and thymus okay inferior parathyroid gland and thymus okay so you can see here this is thyroid gland and this is the inferior parathyroid gland and this is the inferior parathyroid gland and this is you can see thymus okay so inferior parathyroid gland and thymus are going to be the derived from third pharyngeal pouch okay and failure in the development of third pharyngeal pouch is called nizilog syndrome later i will talk about nizilog syndrome okay these are the anomalies of the pharyngeal pouches okay so the derivatives of third pharyngeal pouch is inferior parathyroid gland and thymus okay remember it for mcqs the derivatives of third pharyngeal pouch inferior parathyroid gland and thymus okay now the fourth pharyngeal pouch the endodermal depression between the fourth and sixth pharyngeal arch is called that is what we can call fourth pharyngeal pouch okay you can see here this is fourth pharyngeal arch and this is sixth pharyngeal arch and this depression is actually what this depression is fourth pharyngeal pouch now the derivatives of the fourth pharyngeal arch is superior parathyroid gland okay superior parathyroid gland and you can see this is thyroid gland this is follicular cells and around these cells are parafollicular cells and parafollicular cells are also called c cell okay c cell of the thyroid gland so the derivatives of fourth pharyngeal pouch is superior parathyroid gland and we can also call it ultimo brachial body okay ultimo brachial body or you can also call it c cell or you can also call it parafollicular cells okay parafollicular cells because parafollicular cells is going to secrete calcitonin and so that's why we can also call it c cell so they may give you in the mcqs maybe c cell they may give you in the mcqs maybe parafollicular cells or they may give you in the mcqs ultimo brachial body okay be and this this will be formed because of the migration of neural crystals into this pharyngeal arch okay into this pharyngeal pouch there will be the migration of neural crystals okay in the neural crystal remaining derivatives this ultimo brachial body or c cell or we can say parafollicular cells is also the derivatives of uh, neural crystal okay there will be the neural crystal migration to this and they are going to form what thing they are going to form c cells or parafollicular cells okay so remember the derivatives of fourth pharyngeal arch superior parathyroid gland and ultimo brachial body okay remember this is for mcq is very important okay now this is the this is the summary the summary is for the pharyngeal pouches okay so just remember this and you will you will find okay now you can see here first pharyngeal arch second pharyngeal arch third and fourth and sixth and inner side they are covered by endoderm and there will be depression between the two pharyngeal arches and these depressions are called pharyngeal pouch now you can see there is the first pharyngeal pouch which is going to form middle ear it is going to form middle ear cavity and uh, auditory tube okay auditory tube which is also called pharyngeal tympanic tube now the second is going to form parathyroid tonsils now the third is going to form inferior parathyroid gland and thymus okay this was this one is thymus now the fourth pharyngeal pouch is going to form what thing it is going to form the superior parathyroid gland and also it is going to form ultimo brachial body or we can call it c cells or you can also call it parafollicular cells here you can see pouches okay so this is pouches and derivatives for the first auditory tubes and middle ear middle ear okay middle ear cavity the epithelial lining of the middle ear cavity or auditory tube okay pharyngeal tympanic tube auditory tube is also called pharyngeal tympanic tube so remember it for mcqs for the second you can say palatine tonsils okay for the third you can say inferior parathyroid gland plus thymus okay and for the fourth you can call it superior parathyroid gland and also ultimo brachial body or you can call it c cells of thyroid gland or parafollicular cells of the c now remember in the anomalies if there is failure in the development of the third pharyngeal pouch it will give you this a syndrome illakar that is called nizilog syndrome and if there is the failure in the development of third and fourth pharyngeal pouches that is what we call dygeor syndrome okay later on we will talk about this nizilog syndrome and dygeor syndrome so you remember you guys have to remember this for mcqs many many mcqs is going to be come from this topic so just remember this summary okay hope you guys understand it enjoy your time goodbye